Hi, welcome to the Trinity Podcast. I'm your host, Pawn Wizard. Today with me, I've got Punk Rock Lee. Hello. And Meat Moto. Hi. Today we're going to be talking about pendulums. Um, the main point about them being they're a bit problematic to balance. They have fundamental design issues that make them uh, tricky when it comes to Trinity because of things like the summon limit. Um, Punk, what's your opinion on uh, pendulums right now? Well, right now they're on the weaker side. I generally think that uh, right now you kind of have to build them so conservatively because all their like biggest explosive power cards got hit, and uh, it means they're like for being such an explosive mechanic, the deck right now is kind of like slow and almost a bit wimpy. Mm -hmm. So it, it's with the current state of pendulums, it's hard to say like, oh, this is like really really strong like as a mechanic but i the, the state they're in right now is very like reactionary based on how pendulums were in the past um the first time we saw pendulums in the trinity format was i think um well at least the first time we saw them as a real threat was when um punk mainly discovered vortex dragon and just how easy it was to summon and how oppressive that card by itself was yeah. Um, I wasn't actually one behind Vortex Dragon. Don't want to steal credit. Yeah, I think that I think oh, it okay. was W Train who found Vortex Dragon. Um, it was a combination of Vortex Dragon and Electromite coming out. I think Electromite coming out was really what sort of pushed it over because I think before Electromite was out, yeah. no one really gave it the time of day, even though it was I think still very good. Yeah, I think back then it was good enough to be broken, but it wasn't until Electromite that people like pay attention to pendulums. Yeah. So I mean, I think that. The issue with pendulums, right? It, it's a two. It's a two tier issue, right? So there's the issue of how it breaks the summon limit, and then there's the sort of offshoot issue of how it breaking the summon limit allows the deck to be the only really efficient combo deck that's ever existed in Trinity format, right? Yeah, and let's let's discuss that real quick for people who might not know. Um, in Trinity, there's the three summon limits, obviously, for effect monsters. But if you pendulum summon one pendulum summon. If it includes any amount of effect monsters, it always counts as one summon. Yeah, it's instances of summoning monsters. So even in Pendulum, you abuse this with stuff that's not Pendulum summoning. For example, Bow Baboon. When you destroy it, you get to summon two other Bow Baboons. Those are summoned at the same time, so you can, after that, make a rank free. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason we have to do this is just because there's so much basis in regular Yu-Gi-Oh! rulings that say that a simultaneous summon counts as only one summon. Right, so summoning multiple monsters at the same time through Pendulum Summon or Soul Charge or something like that only counts as one summon for the purpose of like the card summon limit or max C when that was legal, right? When yeah, that back in back in Master Rule three, there was a separate rule for Pendulum Summoning where each effect monster would count towards the summon yeah. limit. Yeah, in Trinity, um, that is. Yeah, in Trinity, yeah, in Trinity but, but it was removed with uh, Master Rule four because it wasn't as necessary to balance it. Because yeah, when you can, because you couldn't just summon five every. Yeah, when you can pen five every turn, it's basically impossible to balance pendulums in any way. But with Master Rule Four, it's I think a lot more feasible to balance them as a mechanic and archetype. So, so the the real, real problematic pendulum decks I think have been the combo oriented ones, like Vortex Dragon, which uh, got banned out almost immediately when we discovered it. But then uh, after people have like seen like. Oh, Vortex Dragon's broken. What else in Pendulums can we break? Um, Zephra was the next big thing, which lasted for quite a while. Yeah, I think Zephra was probably the biggest Pendulum issue just because it's the most efficient for Trinity, right? Because even in Trinity, and even though you can Pendulum Summon to sort of cheat the summon limit, it's still hard a lot of the time to both get scales and Pendulum enough monsters in one turn to make anything more meaningful than like a rank four or something but zephyr sort of bypasses that by the fact that zephyr knew when you summon it gets you in a gate just off the summon and then if you're summoning it with like another boss monster like jackal king or apex avian or then you're also summoning a two level force then now suddenly you have two disruptions right yeah mm -hmm. or if you have zephyr scales up you can uh, when he's destroyed by the uh, uh, pillars you would also get a search for Zephyr War, which can be activated from hand if you have two Zephyr skills. Or you can just search Zephyr Divine Strike, which gives you a negate on the next turn with by banishing yeah. the Zephyr New from your face of extra deck. And it's just... And also the consistency with which you could do that, because there's 
three or four different cards in Zephra that search uh, Zephra new. Along with Electromite, which yeah, and then Electromite would search anything. I mean, even without Electromite, I think Zephra was would have been too strong. I mean, we hit them at the same time, I think, but still, right? Just because there's so many yeah. ways, even before Electromite came out, to have searched out Zephra new and get it onto the field. Electromite's just sort of the piece that made it absurdly consistent. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I mean, two to three negate boards in TCG is pretty formidable, but in Trinity, where we consider even just set Solemn Strike to be uh, a bit on the strong side, like, three negates is is just an instant. Yeah, order. I mean... Three negates barely happen, though. Yeah, I mean, but even Let's one or two... Even, say... What, two negates definitely happen. Even two negates, or even one negate with a setup for a negate and a play on the next turn, is ridiculously above curve for trinity because you have to consider that like if this if somebody was putting up a board like that in like i don't know synchro era usually like people would have been screaming how busted that deck was right i mean you just didn't see shit like that in the past and trinity being more at that power level and you did you you uh you brought up something earlier um that we haven't mentioned yet uh apex cards like apex avian and uh the mythical beasts uh Apex Avian is not intended to be summoned every single turn for free, almost. Yeah, I mean, it's right? not really intended to be um, summoned with any kind of ease. You're supposed to have to either, like, hard tribute it out, or use some weird Mist Valley stuff, or use, like, a ninja, one of those ninjutsu transformations or something, right? Right. But in Pendulums, it's, as long as you have scales, which your deck is going to be designed to do, um, you summon it every single turn, and it's, it's just a free negate if you draw it, which yeah. is really problematic yeah i mean adding on to this problem pens pendulums also kind of forces to ban most floodgate based monsters even if they're hard to get out that are level eight or lower yeah jinzo for example i personally don't agree with jinzo but the fact that pendulum can just summon jinzo whenever makes me think like uh yeah i think jinzo would still be banned because like ba could just summon ba tribute for you yeah i mean there's a lot of things but specifically not even just Dark Simorgus yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Dark it's not Simorg. even just like one tribute stuff. It's a lot of that two tribute stuff. Because even if you're not pendulum summoning out, pendulums give you a really easy way to get that tribute fodder, right? Like, even if you really wanted to, you could have played yeah, advantage well. with pendulum. It would have been slightly suboptimal, but whenever you dropped it, you'd win the game, right? So you just get a lot of stuff like that with pendulum. And it's just, that's when we're talking about it posing fundamental design problems. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the the ability to summon cards that aren't supposed to be that easy to summon, and how it breaks the summon limit. Um, yeah. And just and yeah. just how the mechanic operates. Yeah, and I think it being able to summon cards that you're not supposed to be able to summon is also sort of a problem, even in the TCG iteration of Pendulum. It's just that by the time Pendulum came out in TCG, most of those monsters weren't so overpowered that. They would that they really made pen that those specifically made pendulum way better than everything else. But yeah, in Trinity with the card will overall being I think weaker, it makes yeah it makes. And those I mean, cards. I think part of P- pendulums always had to be sort of balanced around that too, because that's why you never see scales above uh, eight without having some sort of limitation on what you can summon. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we recently got our first uh, nine scales that are, don't have a strict strict downside to them. So the other the other issue with balancing pendulums is we can't just nerf these things um, because that's how we kind of end up where the pendulums are at now. Because if you, if you just straight nerf them to what should be a balanced level, we still have the problem of pendulum sideboard cards being incredibly powerful. Um, we've got cards like Pendulum Storm, which is a two for one. Uh, well, it's a three for Wavering one. Eyes before three, it went four. to Co yeah. was a two for one. Um, what else? And then Pendulum Hole, which is like basically Psalm Strike for Pendulums that is better. It's not a, it makes nothing float. Right. Won't then there's it. Master Pendulum, which kills a Pendulum Scale once per turn. There's, uh, we think, Vector, which is a Floodgate for pen- all Pendulum Monsters. There's uh, Scrap Iron Statue, which will let you once per turn on either player's turn pop a scale that activates its effect in scale. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the the Pendulum sideboard cards are really, really strong, and Pendulums need to be in some way compensated for that, unless we want to just hit every single Pendulum sideboard card, which I don't think we want to do. Yeah. There's spell shattering as well, right? K- 
kill all face up spells. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's um, there's just a lot of different. There's a lot of even when you take floodgates like anti spell fragrance and imperial order out of the equation, there's a lot of really efficient scale killers that exist. Mm-hmm. And even just cards that people run in every single deck, like Twin Twisters and uh, Heavy Storm Duster, like if if you're going second as Pendulum and your opponent started with Twin Twisters or Heavy Storm Duster, like you're in a really bad position uh, most of the time. The solution is either to let Pendulums be a bit over the curve in exchange for the fact that it's somewhat balanced by the sideboard cards being really good. Or I think the better solution is to push one particular brand of pendulums that are better able to deal with those sideboard cards. Uh, that that archetype being metal foes. Yeah, I, mean, I think that brings up sort of a good point about the pendulum archetypes. Because I think that what really sort of, besides Zephyr, I mean, in what makes pendulums busted isn't just one individual archetype necessarily outside maybe Zephyr. It's the fact that when everything was at unlimited, you could just play all of them at the same time. And I don't really think that outside of Zephyr, any individual pendulum archetype is necessarily super broken on its own. It's when you introduce two or three other pendulum archetypes that are just about as good, so that now you're always drawing really good pendulum cards, right? And yeah. that that's, I think, where the problem comes in. There's a bunch of really, really strong pendulum searchers, too, like... Um... I mean, for a while we had um, summoners are co forbidden because, or was it even semi? Because it could it was a flex scale that uh, could also set up. Um, couldn't it set up uh, Cyber Dragon Infinity? Yeah, you get the uh, Clifford Scout activate its effect, set a Melfo in the other scale, pop the Scout. Uh, you search uh, what's it called? What's called monolith? Monolith, yeah, yeah. And then you pendulum summon the Scout from extra deck and the monoliths from hand, and you're having used zero summons. Because yeah. those are both normals. So you can and use you can both summons to summon no end and infinity. Yeah, so then you can make infinity and normal summon something. We, we, we've had difficulties before with just how searchable pendulum cards are. Yeah. Um, and I think it's. This once again comes back to a similar problem that I, we've discussed before on the podcast with Trinity Design is that a lot of stuff in TCG is designed to be at that TCG level to keep up with like the combo decks that are relevant in TCG. And then when you sort of shave off the top layer of combo decks, because none of those decks are viable in that form in TC in Trinity, then you start seeing problems introduced by the cards that Konami made to sort of bring them up to speed with those other decks, right? Because mm-hmm. like when you look back at Pendulums, like originally when they first came out, they were terrible. This was just like a lot of scales with a lot of restrictions. There wasn't a lot of efficient searching, and it wasn't really until like Pepe, right, where you had Monkey Board and Luster Pendulum and Skulker Rat Joker and shit, that you were really starting to see them put out pendulum scales that were replacing themselves and searching a bunch of other scales, and then they started releasing a bunch of generic scales that were also searchable, and that's sort of how we've gotten to this point, right? Mm-hmm. And then they as they continue to make pendulum cards, they still make them really overpowered because in regular TCG, Master Rule 4 sort of keeps the power level down a lot more than it does in Trinity, I think. Just because penduluming like one or two dudes that are maybe beaters in TCG is terrible, but doing that in Trinity is still passable in a lot of situations. Yeah. I mean, in even in Trinity, um, special summoning Archfiend Eccentric every single turn it ha- can be really effective against some decks. Um, and, like, I was playing against Punk's Zoo uh, not too long ago, and, like, just because I had access to Archfina Centric every single turn, I could just pop his Broadbore or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't fly in TCG. That, that's yeah, not nearly that, enough. But we can also talk about that was a match, and that was the game one, where you blew out my sort of good stuff-ish deck, although it's quite archetypal, but it's still, like, kind of focused on local middle threats and all that, and Pendulum really bops in those kinds of decks. But mm-hmm. uh, in game two and three, I drew it to some of my Pendulum si- side hate, and uh, you couldn't didn't really have a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's there's no way. Yeah, um, I think that sort of highlights the the problem. Another design problem, right, is just that it's it ends up being they, very, like, well, either I push in super hard and win, or I just get blown out and can't do it. Pendulums can be incredibly feast or famine. Like, 
they they typically either absolutely dominate and there's not much you can do, or you draw your pendulum side hate and they're stuck with a dead hand because all of their cards require, you know, the scales first in order to work. Um, so that brings me back to the the thing with metal foes where metal foes can actually deal with their scales getting popped, like uh, with cards like Bismagear and. Um, a couple of like scale protection cards or just ways to float or um, even without floating or anything like that, just h- how metal foes gain a ton of advantage over time by playing a value-based game rather than a controlled, negate-heavy game. Um, they can deal with the pendulum side hate. Yeah, and I would provided, say... Provided like, the archetype is strong enough. And I would argue uh, that magi- just, magicians can also sort of do that. Because a lot yeah, of their yeah, scales float. Because they have... Um, well, yeah, their, their skills either have uh, effects or uh, they just have really efficient searchers that bless them usually. Yeah. I don't know, there's just not enough good enough magicians yeah, to I mean, run. That's, that's the main problem. I mean, that's just true for pretty much any pendulum archetype, though, is that... There's just not enough cards. There's not enough yeah. cards for really any... The only pendulum archetype that has a lot of cards is Perform Pals. And yeah. most of them, and I would say 95 largely of Perform Pals are unplayably bad, right? I mean, most Perform Pals yeah. aren't even pendulums, actually. A lot of them are just effect monsters. So you end up with most pendulum archetypes being like 6 to 10 cards, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to play them all together. And I think that individually they're very strong in those 6 to 10 cards, because that's just sort of how archetypes are designed in TCG. And I mean, that's True. That's going to be true for pretty much any archetype in Trinity. The difference being that with, like, I don't know, dragons or light sworn or something, there's a bunch of generic stuff you can put alongside it. You can't really do that in pendulums, right? Because if I'm running a bunch of generic staples, then I'm not drawing scales and I can't play. Right. Yeah. You need a really, really high scale density because you need to be able to play through them popping at least one of your scales. Mm-hmm. At least, probably two, but at least one, or else you're pretty much chanceless to have any kind of grind game. Yeah, so which I... is which is part of what makes it difficult because we can't just look at magicians and be like, okay, these magician cards are broken, put them in semi, and then look at metal foes and be like, okay, these metal foe cards are broken, let's put them in the semi, and then you know go through every single uh, archetype like that because you don't, you never are able to build a pendulum deck like that you can't just look at magicians and be like okay this is going to be my deck because there's there's not enough cards and that's just not going to work um yeah. so we have to balance them as like a whole group of cards rather than like archetype by archetype yeah um, I mean, something interesting to note it, though is that i think for a lot of archetypes there's this notion that's mostly true that hey, if you're just semi forbidding a bunch of cards it doesn't actually balance it but I think for pendulums, because they're so reliant on you running a bunch of pendulum cards, semi forbidding the big cards from every archetype does actually help to reduce pendulum's power level in a mm-hmm. way that yeah. semi forbidding stuff doesn't necessarily do with everything. Yeah, that's one thing you'll notice if you try deck building under the current Trinity list that. Uh... Whew, wow, are high skills bad? <laughs> Yeah. I've read each and every single one of them, and wowee, those are some bad cards. Yeah, it's basically just the vanilla Odd Eyes, um, Arc Pendulum, I think. Yep. Yeah, and um, Black Fang Magician. Yeah, Harmonizing Magician's a good one. But you don't really semi. want to use Harmonizing as a scale. And she's semi for um, Yeah, and she's semi. Um, yeah, I mean... So you're you're running really low on high scales. You, you have to rely on some much jankier cards. I mean, there's, like, Volflame, obviously, but... The ways I think you can play Pendulum are combo-based, which is so incredibly unhealthy that th- there's no way we can ever let that be... There's no way you can, we can ever let that exist in Trinity with it being balanced. Like, there, there's no way Negate Turbo will ever be, like, something we want in Trinity, I think. Yeah, and um, I think that's pretty... That's a pretty safe thing to say. It just doesn't really jive with the like fundamental sort of thrust of where we want the meta to go mm-hmm. right i mean because i think sort of a big motivation behind the sum limit is to limit the crazy combo decks 
And then yeah. when Pendulum comes along and, while well, obviously not on the level of a TCG combo deck, is still doing some crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's practically on the level of a... Because it, it, it's such a huge mismatch in power, I feel, that it, it feels like you're playing against a TCG deck. Because it, it's it's very similar in the sense it's like another... Like, oh, they're taking a, a three, four, five minute turn to just do this one combo and then... I just had to stare. At, I just had to do like a break their board type of situation. It's not. It feels very much like a TCG. Um, you should never have to eye up a uh, sphere mode in Trinity. Yeah. Um, you yeah. shouldn't have to at least. Yeah, I mean, in um, general, we we try to even limit kaiju's being a thing that people want to be playing as general outs, right? That's sort of. I mean, I think early on, especially that was sort of a design goal was to make it so people don't have to run kaiju's. Um, which I mean, especially was more relevant, I think, when the format came out because ki- there was a lot more like kaijuable decks in TCG, like True Draco and whatever. And if you're discussing Ross under Lava Golem, I think you've gone a bit too far. Yeah, yeah. We could basically just market Trinity as this is the format for you if you hate True Draco. Oh, and True Draco is pretty fun as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think I think another way to play Pendulum is is tempo based, which I think. I think Magician a bit falls into this category if you're if you're heading towards like the synchroy Xyz route, right? Yeah, and I um, mean in general, I think the whole like Pendulum summoning Eccentric or Purple Poison every turn to accrue advantage is a bit tempo-y, even though that sort of because of the way Pendulum is is more you're doing tempo to accrue a big push. That's sort of how mm-hmm. Pendulum ends up playing a lot of the time, right? Is yeah, yeah, you're. Well, normal tempo decks, the idea is that you're doing those one-for-one trades every turn with cards just to grind your opponent down and then poke them to death, like Pacifus or something, like control decks do, basically, right? Or even, like, mm-hmm. True Draco or something, where, you know, you'll be popping your opponent's cards and then you, like, beat your opponent down because Drake, Dynamite Knight has 2,500 attack. But in Pendulum, it's more like you're stalling almost to draw a big push a lot of the time. Yeah. And uh, I, I think another archetype was like DDD, which DDD was pretty tempo based because it was basically like let me get this big three K beater out and banish some of your stuff and then swing for game. Um, without Electromite, I don't see DDD ever being relevant again. Um, yeah, I, I mean, mean they weren't even really relevant with Electromite. I mean they were like um, playable, but they were definitely yeah, they were not playable. the best deck. And that's just sort of an unfortunate side effect of Electromite, I think, just being a bit too strong in Yeah, general. it pushed archetypes that didn't really have much to go off of into, like, something playable. Yeah, I honestly think uh, DDD was, like, not even the best at doing what it was doing, even though it was doing its own thing. Yeah, I think Magicians were just better at, at doing that same type of game plan, by yeah. just making, like... Um, Oh, what's the big pendulum synchro? Ignister? Yeah, Ignister. It's just, just pendulum magicians making Ignister was better than anything DDD did. Yeah, because like DDD has all their own archetypal dudes, which are cool and fun to use, but they're not as good as just like Supreme King Clearwing or Ignister or Beals. Right? Yeah, all the like, Supreme King. Like, all those cards are just better. No, something yeah. I would like to talk about a little is how we think it might change. Uh, when Lampholinkus and Traffic Ghost come out, um, because Lampholinkus and Traffic Ghost are coming out in, I think, two or three weeks in TCG to be legal in Trinity. And while I think that obviously the the whole like drawing and searching anything was really relevant with Electromite, especially in Trinity, one of the big things that made Electromite so much better was the two down arrows, right? Because that really like, yeah. pushes one, one forward thing, how far One thing a lot of goes. decks tried to do when Electromite was out was like, get Electromite out in one or two summons, that way you still had a Pendulum summon afterwards. Yeah. Um, and it will it will be much easier to summon Lanfo in one or two summons, and then have a Pendulum summon. Getting yeah. it out by, say, uh, using Unexpected Die for a normal monster, and then normal summoning a normal Pendulum monster would be amazing, because that meant you could not only pull off the CDI combo, Cyber Dragon Infinity, but you could also... Uh, do it the same turn as you put up Electromite. Yeah. yeah. And I think you'll be able to do similar things with Lampolinkus, right? Because if you consider that same combo of, you know, Unexpected Dire Emergency Teleport and a Vanilla, then you now have two down arrows and zero summons. 
Right, because Lame Flinkus doesn't count as a summon, and it has two. Mm-hmm. Different modes. Well, the, the the big difference is going to be that that is going to be significantly worse turn one. For sure, yeah. Uh, beca- because what part of what made Electromite better there is that it put cards into your extra deck, um, so you yeah. actually had something to extra deck summon out of. Well, it, it is a lot of reasons. It both it put cards in your extra deck. It basically guaranteed you scales because. At, it turns any scale into any other scale. And then it also draws you a card. So when you're starting on five cards and spending two, you have to spend two to get Electromite out, right? Usually. Mm-hmm. Then you're going to be at only three cards, but Electromite then, like, meaning that if you then make scales after that, you have one card left in hand. But Electromite turned that one card into two cards plus two from your extra deck that you could sculpt, right? And I think now it'll be that you can Pendulum maybe three. Right. You'd be able to pendulum the two you use to make a lack or lamp and kiss and then the one other card in your hand. And obviously there's gonna be some situations where you can pen four, but it's gonna be a lot rarer. So I think like the situations where you're actually gonna be able to do like a pendulum summon into two X's is going to be rare. But that do- that is still a market power boost for pendulum without changing anything on the band list for them. Yeah, so uh, Pran, you mentioned you think uh, the metal foes are fair earlier. Yeah, I they so- recover their scales and so on. I, it's not necessarily that metal foes are m- more fair than any other uh, pendulum archetype. It's more that they're the only pendulum archetype that doesn't have to play super fast and is actually capable of playing against these extremely strong anti-pendulum sideboard cards, which which makes them much easier to balance because we don't have to worry about, like, okay, are they good enough to still deal with the sideboard cards, right? Because they, they already are just like as a base because of the way they accrue advantage and the way that they float. So I think what we what we need to do going forward to balance pendulums is make sure that metal foes we need to, we need to work with metal foes being the core archetype of pendulum decks. So what um, you're saying is un unlim uh, counter. Right? Yes, I think unlim counter is the way to go. Oh yeah. Give it to me, baby. Um, because I, I think counter is very core to what metal folks are trying to do. And we just need to maintain hits on the other archetypes in order to balance pendulums. And then just leave metal foes as like the identity of pendulums in Trinity. As like as unfortunately as as that is, because you know, we obviously want to encourage deck diversity. Um, but but I, I truly think that the only like perfectly balanced state for pendulums will lie with metal foes being the core. And I think that sort of to expand on that is that if you're just running metal foes and one other pendulum archetype, that usually will not be super broken, right? No. It was when you were running three or four that were all good, right? When you're running Zephra and Magician and Metal Foes and then a bunch of other generic scales and stuff. Or, right. or even just Metal Foes plus Magicians plus all of those weird, like, mythical beast cards that would just randomly get you a boss monster or yeah. Apex Avian. Well, it's, it's just how few cards that you could do that in, right? So, like, you would still do that, but you have to play, like, 60 cards. And because you can't just splash a bunch of generics into, you know, like, rank 4 enablers or traps or whatever without tanking your deck, you can't just wantonly expand your deck size and not see serious consequences and the consistency from that. Right. And so, yeah, now that we've now that we've dealt with cards like the Mythical Beasts and the Apex Avians and the Jinzos and stuff, um, I, I think there is a much more room for a, a stronger um, Metal Foes archetype because I, I think we, o- we overhit them the first time. Um, that's It's something I do frequently is push for overhits and then rebalance because I, I just would way more rather personally ne- not like not have to see that archetype the next month after hating it the previous month than you know we underhit it and it's it, the meta feels stale and awful because we've had to deal with the same overpowered deck twice in a row. Um, yeah. So now I think now that I think we've we've gotten some of the problematic cards out of the way we we've, we've hit the other archetypes we can bring back metal foes. And then see see where we're at, and then maybe unhit some magician stuff if it's necessary. Yeah, definitely. I think that the key there is just to sort of be slow with rolling off the hits, 
and make sure we're testing it as we go. And I think that's sort of the big benefit of overheating something is that then you're sort of eliminating it and sort of putting it back to like a baseline so that you can test back up and see what really should go back in. Right. Yeah. It's sort of the same reason, I think, the same general philosophy why Konami does that whole thing where when they unban a card, they put it to one and then two and then three, right? Just yeah. to make sure. Although, win that to two makes no sense, OCG. What are you doing? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, there, there's so many. There's a lot we, of... There, there's a whole other podcast we made on TCG cards that yeah, should have yeah. been unbanned years ago. Well, and there's also a whole <laughs> podcast to be made on why in TCG semi-limited is usually irrelevant, but yeah. I digress. That's not really relevant to Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, because there's no sem- uh, semi limited here. So yeah. So so to wrap it up a bit, the metal foes are, I think, are going to be the only way to truly balance what is fundamentally a, a problematic archetype of cards being pendulum. Because um, they're the only thing that is both not oppressive, like Zephra or something, but all and also is capable of dealing with the built-in measures Konami has put in to try to uh, balance pendulums in the TCG. Yeah, and I mean, I think you can sort of even see that where I would say since Metal Post came out, when you ask you a lot of the times, like, what's one of the most balanced competitive decks? A lot of people, more recent players especially, will answer Metal Foes. Just because in sort of the modern landscape of, of decks, Metal Foes has been one of the most balanced outside of in TCG, you know, a few of those edge case cards like Kirin and Jaugen or something like that, right? But I mean, and that's the same idea here, where like it was broken when Apex Avian and Jackal King were unlimited and you could just play them for free. But I think with, when you have to invest a lot more in to get those cards, it becomes dicier. And I mean, I even think that potentially those um, the gate bosses, at least Apex Avian, might need to get banned or something. Apex Avian is so hard to search. Potentially right. It's something, that's definitely something that we consider, but I think that I personally would much rather ban those sort of like huge negation payoffs than do a bunch of medium range hits on the actual decks, right? Because it's almost accidental that something like Apex, as we said, it's accidental that Apex Avian is good in pen. Konami didn't sit down in 2009 or whenever they made that card and say, well, let's make this for pendulums, right? In the same way that they never made anti-spell variants to counter pendulums, right? It's just those are all sort of accidental card pool things. Okay. So, uh, quick break for our sponsors. Today's episode has been sponsored by Treetops Jawline. Treetops Jawline. Stronger than free negates. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Trinity Podcast. Uh, Stay groovy. I don't know how to say stay groovy properly. Stay groovy. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get Treetop in to say groovy. You have to get Treetop's accent. That's the only way to do it. Treetop, just edit in you saying stay groovy. Thank you. Stay groovy. Thank you. <laughs> All right.